Well, growing up with four boys, we would often find ourselves in situations where we were bickering and fighting with each other. And oftentimes we'd run to our mom and we'd try to convince my mom that the other person did something that caused us to be upset. And I remember my mom on more than one occasion saying this phrase. She would say, you're not responsible for anyone else's actions. You're only responsible for yours. Now, that's sage advice from a wise woman uh, because the truth is we can't always control other people's actions and behaviors, but we can control ours. In fact, we know that uh, based on what we talked about this week about being a peacemaker, that the responsibility of a child of Christ is to be someone who works for or who fights for peace in this world. But yeah, what we know is, is that peace is not always going to happen. Even if we do our part in that, sometimes we just can't live at peace with certain individuals. In fact, the Bible recognizes it. That's why in Psalm 58 verse 4, the Bible reminds us that there are toxic people in this world. Uh, in fact, it says, uh, it refers to them as poisonous serpents, where they uh, often cause uh, dissension and chaos and, 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 and put poison into relationships that, that break them down. They become toxic as a result of it. Now, we've all experienced toxic people, people who blame us for their pain or blame us for their problems. They just seem to have a hard time getting along with others. But yeah, what the Bible challenges us to do as followers of Christ is not to be a toxic person or a poisonous snake, right? But to be someone who is a peacemaker, someone who fights for peace. So how do we do that? I love the challenge that we're given by Paul in Romans 12 verse 18, where he says it this way. He says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I love that. We're supposed to live at peace with everyone. But there are two qualifying statements to that. First off, he says, if, right? If, it's not always possible, right? But if it is possible, as much as it depends on you. So if, which reminds us that it's not always going to be possible. No matter what we do in a situation, it's not going to be possible. But the second qualifying phrase there is, as much as it depends on you. As much as it depends on me. So I've got a part to play in this. And if there's anything that I can do to bring peace into a situation, that's what I need to do. Regardless of what the other person is doing, right? No matter what their behavior is or their disposition is, I have to do everything I possibly can to live at peace with people. Now, I know sometimes uh, we do everything right, but still we're not able to rectify situations. I think the Bible reminds us that there are people who are hurting, dealing with pain and brokenness. And oftentimes, I say it this way, hurting people hurt others. And no matter how much you try to bring peace into a relationship, it's just not possible. But if you can, you do everything you can to bring peace in that relationship. Now, here's what I want us to, to know. Jesus said it this way. Like when we work in a relationship and we don't see peace in that, what Jesus says is this. He says that we have a responsibility, even if somebody wants nothing to do with us, even if they're an enemy of ours. Jesus says, here's what you need to do. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The most powerful thing that we can do in a broken relationship is to love and pray for people. And so I want to challenge you today. If you find yourself in a situation where you have done everything you possibly can to, to rectify a broken relationship, I want to encourage you to do what Jesus said. Pray for that person and love them the best way you possibly can, as much as it depends on you. And remember the sage advice of my mom when she said, you're not responsible for anybody else's actions. You're only responsible for yours. So how responsible are you being with your actions? And I believe if you follow the way of Christ, if you implement what we talked about this week about being a peacemaker, I believe that maybe not all of your relationships will be perfect and peaceful, but a lot more will. And you'll have a lot more happiness and blessing in your life. Thanks for joining us this week. I want to close this in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that we, as much as depends on us, can live at peace with others when we do our part in that. But God, in order for us to live at peace, we have to evaluate our lives. Are we quick to retaliate or do we offer people love and grace? Are we cultivating a peaceful spirit or, God, is there bitterness and resentment in us? 
Is there kindness in us or are we unkind? Are we doing things from your perspective that would allow us to be peacemakers? And I pray, God, if we're going to see the peace in this world that we that we want to see and desire to see, it starts with us. And I pray, God, that you would allow us to have the strength and the energy to look at our actions, to evaluate them, and do everything we can to fight for reconciliation. Thank you for the time that we've had together this week, and I pray that we would all have a great weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I do want to thank you for joining us this week for Life Lifters. I hope that this subject about being a peacemaker has been encouraging to your life. Have a great weekend.